Singh, who's at the conference in Brighton. Uh, I think um, Keir Starmer will be relatively happy that at least one of his votes got through on reforming how any future leader of the party could be elected. It was important to him because of the fact that Jeremy Corbyn got in when the activists were very happy with him, but the shadow cabinet at the time were not, and yet we still had Jeremy Corbyn as leader for the Labour Party. Now what he's done is he's wanted to get make sure that 20% of MPs have to back any new future leader before a vote, uh, and that was thought to be a perilous reform uh, that the activists might not back him but in fact they did in the end and so he will feel pretty pleased about that except when you talk about unity in fact people like Andy Burnham people in his own shadow cabinet so hang on a minute a massive conference like this after the pandemic why have we spent all about some reform to party rules that doesn't really affect the public, that the public don't really care about. There's also, of course, what's really got the headlines is um, Angela Rayner's comments uh, calling Tory scum. She was here at an event and we know that that story has gone everywhere, of course. She's defended her comments and said actually she won't apologise for them until Boris Johnson apologises for what she deems are his offensive comments in the past. But talking about unity and a split, you know, that's his deputy... Prime uh, Deputy Sh Shadow there saying all those things. Keir Starmer asked, should she apologise? And he sort of distanced himself from her. Listen to this. So we talk about sort of disunity in terms of, you know, the, the far left who are still, you know, there's a bit of a Corbyn hangover here, of course, lots of those momentum activists who still want to push for that sort of far left agenda here. But also, as you see, within the leadership of the party, some disunity and some splits there. Sadiq Khan, the London mayor, is going to be addressing the conference. He says, look, it's time for the party to understand that if they're going to be elected, they have to essentially try and speak with one voice, even when some Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Well, today the attention will hopefully for the party be on Rachel Reeves, the shadow chancellor, who's going to be saying that she's going to scrap business rates to ease the burden on, high, on the high street and instead turn her attention to online giants and also uh, take away the charitable status from private schools and use that um, tax to then fund state schools better. But again, disunity, because she has said that she has no plans to raise income tax and yet Keir Starmer has said that everything's on the table uh, and that in fact income tax rises might not uh, be uh, off uh, the plan, as Rachel Reeves is saying. So again, they've got some work to do here at this party conference to try and sound and seem like they all are reading from the same hymn sheet. Ryan Veer, thank you. Hard job. Yep. Terrible job. It is a really difficult, hard job. And they don't get paid nope. you, £10.50 an hour or something, some yep. drivers. <laughs> And actually, you know, I think it really does highlight, doesn't it? Who do we value in society? Mm. Who do we really pay for the jobs yep. that they do? Because when they don't do them, we're talking about care work. Yeah, and about and what and might happen if they're not double jabbed uh, and if they the, don't go into the, that industry. The, Pulls yeah. and, you know, to drive an we oil tank. Really really the question I think is interesting, isn't it, is that, look, the majority of the country voted for Brexit, right? We were warned by Remainers that there would be some disruption. Yeah. And knowing all the facts, and I don't think you can say that Brexit vote, even, you know, you, so let's say Brexit voters did their research, they knew what they were voting for, and they voted for it knowing all the problems that might come ahead, this being perhaps one of them. Project fear, I'm not sure that in the, in the polling, whether actually those people who voted for Brexit will... Does he benefit from this in any way? I don't necessarily think he does. Yeah, run. Those big voices from the North... Tall poppy here, syndrome. It makes no Tall sense. I think the thing with Angela Rayner is, and it came across in that interview, if you didn't read it in, in the Times at the weekend, it's definitely worth it. I found it quite captivating. Mm. She describes the fact that, look, and it's this idea, when you come from nothing, which she basically did, you know, financially speaking, she feels like she's got nothing to lose. And in a way, what she's doing now is far, she's exceeded her own expectations. She had a baby at 15. She looked after a mum who had bipolar. You know, she, she was saying that the reason she loves her hair and has glossy hair now is because her hair was hardly ever washed when she was a kid. Mm. This is real stuff she's talking about. She talks about why she was so angry about children not getting fed meals over the summer holidays. And that's part of what she said in that tirade at the weekend was about the WhatsApp group for, you know, COVID friends and uh, uh, of those in government who got billions of pounds in contracts versus kids going without meals. She says it's personal to her because mm -hmm. she was one of those kids. So I think that actually, yes, her language, and I wonder, it's interesting because Keir Starmer was, is so different to her, isn't he? His leadership, he's, he comes from a humble background, mm -hmm. gut. Yes. And I think that it could be an amazing combination of two people, but they just don't yeah. seem to be able to well, 
work that, together. That, that, uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's sort of quite quiet, really, in some ways. But of course, you know, when you talk about unity and disunity, Keir Starmer, in one way, might be quite happy this morning because he got one of his reforms voted through uh, on about how they could uh, bring in a new party leader in the future. Of course, Jeremy Corbyn got in because the activists were very happy with him, but the, his shadow cabinet were not, the, the leadership of the party were not, yet he still became leader. So what they've done now is they've managed to vote through that 20 percent of MPs uh, would have to back any new leader. Now, that's fine. They've got that through and Keir Starmer will be pleased about that. But actually that in itself has caused huge amounts of criticism from some of his own leadership party because they're saying, hang on a minute, this is a massive moment. We're in a petrol crisis. We've got the pandemic and all sorts of things. And yet you're spending all this time talking about party reforms uh, when actually there are so many more important things to talk about. Of course, what's really got the headlines is what Angela Rayner said at the weekend, his deputy describing Tories as scum. Uh, she refused to apologise for that. She said she'll apologise for that when Boris Johnson apologises for what she deems are his offensive uh, comments from the past and Keir Starmer was asked about that now of course you know here is a moment of whether a leader can show some unity with his deputy or not here's what he actually said so there appears to be a split at the leadership of the party there uh, and also of course the, the concern about the Corbyn hangover here about those on the far left of the party who are still desperate to try and push through some of their ex-Corbyn type of policies. Now, of course, at the weekend, uh, Keir Starmer ditched the idea of renationalising energy firms, which is one of those big key policies. He said he wouldn't do that unless he thought it was value for money uh, for customers. So here's Sadiq Khan, who is the London mayor, of course, the only mayor here on stage, which is, of course is another issue. Why are none of the northern mayors uh, being invited to talk here when votes in the north are what Labour really need? Sadiq Khan is saying it really has to be uh, a party conversation conference where they look and speak like one big family. One of the things that does matter, of course, is the economy massively. Rachel Rees, the Shadow Chancellor, will be speaking today. She's going to talk about scrapping business rates to ease the burden on the high street and turn her attention to online giants. Um, and also talking about removing the charitable status from private schools that gives the private schools a tax relief so that then tax that comes from private schools would then be used to fund uh, state schools. But again, a bit of a split here. She said that she wouldn't have any plans to raise income tax. Keir Starmer has said actually raising income tax might still well be on the table so a lot of work to be done here by the party leadership uh, to convince the public that they are speaking as one voice okay Ryan Beer, thank you does Keir Starmer will be happy that he had one small win, but perhaps not small for him, that uh, he's got some reforms on how any future leader could uh, become the leader of the Labour Party. So uh, it's 20% of Labour MPs would now have to back any future MP who wanted to stand, which essentially would mean that someone like Jeremy Car Cor Corbyn on the hard left would never make it to the top of the party again. So that is a win for him. But you're right, absolutely, that for example, the comments from Angela Rayner, her abrasive language when describing her anger at um, what she believes is, is the problem with Boris Johnson and the Tory party has caught all the headlines. Uh, and Keir Starmer's been pressed on whether he thinks she should apologise. Here's what he said. So there you can see a sort of a, a difference in approach, really, between the leader and his deputy, which sort of goes through the party in many ways, because, of course, you know, there is still a Corbyn hangover here. Many of those who backed the hard left and wanted that agenda to come forward are still here at the Labour Party conference, but don't feel necessarily that at the top they're going to have as much power as they used to. Uh, Sadiq Khan is the London mayor. He's going to be addressing conference here, uh, the only one of the mayors to be doing that, which has caused some upset for the Northern Labour mayors themselves. Why aren't they here, they ask. But Sadiq Khan is saying, look, we have to, as a Labour party, he says, start speaking as one voice. Otherwise, what on earth are the voters to think? So Labour under massive pressure today to come up with some big policy ideas that would capture the imagination of the voters. Uh, that job falls to Rachel Reeves, the shadow chancellor. She's going to be talking about scrapping business rates uh, to ease the burden on the high street and turning her attention in tax terms to the online giants. She'll also be talking about uh, taking away charitable status from private schools uh, that gives them tax relief and using that tax then uh, to fund the state school sector. But she said, in fact, that there would be 
no rise in income tax. Uh, and yet Keir Starmer has said that, in fact, a rise in income tax might still be on the table. So, again, a problem with unity. Indeed, Rambo. Thank you.